it does not matter if your vehicle is E10 or E5 compliant or maybe it asks for pure petrol that is E0. Everyone is being handed out E20 petrol. A few days ago, I read a comment on my channel and then I thought, well, it is about time to talk on this issue. Guys, in this uh, detailed video, we are going to discuss is E20 fuel a scam? We are also going to discuss what are the benefits and problems with this kind of fuel and how to protect our beloved vehicles. I mean, can adding additives be a good option? This video is going to be very detailed and point wise. So make sure to watch it entirely without skipping. Let's start with point number one that what is E20? Now E stands for ethanol, which is generally made from sugar cane or corn. And E20 means the one liter of fuel that you purchase from the fuel dispenser, you get only 800 ml petrol and 200 ml of ethanol is blended in. There are also other variants like E27, which contains like 27% ethanol, E85, which contains 85% ethanol and E100, as you guessed it, contains 100% or pure ethanol let's talk about the problems with e20 because the benefits i guess you've already seen it in variety of news channels so today i'm not going to bore you with any kind of huge theories i have written down a few of my personal experience which i'm going to share the first problem is lower calorific value i mean pure ethanol has lower heating value of around 21 megajoules per liter while gasoline which is petrol offers 31 megajoules per liter so if you think that uh, i mean my vehicle is e20 compliant why should i worry because the energy value in ethanol is already less you are going to see a drop in fuel economy official figures are somewhere around six to seven percent now coming back to my own experience i have this old and gold activa 1g which is the heavy metal body scooter and earlier it used to give easily 38 to 40 kmpl in the city but now the fuel economy has dropped as low as 25 to 30 kilometers per liter so the loss is much greater than six to seven percent especially if you have an older vehicle like bs3 or bs4 model if you are also experiencing this kind of mileage drop then do let me know in the comment section below the second problem is hygroscopic nature that is ability to use moisture and where will this moisture come from generally it comes from the rain especially if your fuel tank or if, you, if your fuel lid has any kind of leakage in it ethanol is just going to suck moisture from there but other than that it also ends up sucking a lot of moisture from air which is like everywhere around you because air contains humidity that is water content and this ethanol is going to just happily absorb it and integrate it in itself and what it's going to do is when it sits in your fuel tank it is going to create a separate layer of water and ethanol at the bottom of your fuel tank and if you don't use your vehicle daily this separate layer can cause cold start issues I mean in the morning when you start your vehicle your fuel pump gets this layer of water and like goop and ethanol and it's not going to receive any petrol at all and this may cause starting troubles next point is that it could be toxic to fuel systems especially like fuel pump injectors rubber hoses seals and the fuel tank may also start rusting especially if your vehicle is not e20 compliant i mean most of the 2023 and earlier vehicles are not e20 compliant in india next comes the cost factor now there are two types of cost factors one is the financial cost other is the environmental cost the petrol that you buy for like 100 to 110 rupees you're getting only 800 ml petrol all right keep that in mind which means that if you run the math it's already like 130 to 135 rupees if you convert that 800 ml to one liter okay and there are many youtubers these days which are suggesting that you buy xp 100 or these other premium petrols which claim to not have any ethanol blending in it i mean these are sold as e0 fuels and they end up costing as high as 160 180 rupees liter all right plus we should add lower fuel economy problems and breakdown and time cost so overall i think that the petrol that you end up buying for like around 100 bucks is actually lending you somewhere around 200 rupees next comes the environmental cost and sugarcane farming is very water intensive so it will put a strain on agricultural system which may cause food shortages or it may cause the food prices to go up ethanol farming and processing will also contribute to secondary emissions and pollutions as you can see on the screen now let's talk a bit about solutions i mean how to protect your vehicle i made a post few days ago actually i brought this new battery for my activa and i read some comments over there and it had me thinking like 
my beloved vehicle which is well maintained it has sentimental value i mean i've spent huge amount of money maintaining it i have paid all kinds of taxes on it should we just scrap it like that well guys generally i do not request that you guys subscribe and share and like my videos but today i'll request you please share this video around as much as possible we just need to spread the word now coming back to the solutions what you can do is start the vehicle daily don't let this e20 fuel sit in your tank i mean we used to do it during the lockdown years right you can do that again second point consumer rights now your car bike scooter is registered it is valid all the taxes have been paid and proper fuel availability is a consumer right brazil and other different countries you know what they have is they have this uh, system with unique separate dispensers if someone needs e0 fuel pure petrol okay here you go here it is for you if someone needs e20 happily so it is available so you need to have separate dispensers for pure e0 petrol e20 e30 e85 and so on now all these things will happen and it may take its own sweet time so what when what we can do right now like what can we do today to protect the vehicle and here enter star of the show that is fuel additives i have been using these fuel additives for around 10 years now i mean e20 started just recently but i have been using them since long and i have used all kind of brands i mean liqui moly worth stp abro is right here system g system d i have used almost all of them and let me clarify that this video is not any kind of sponsored or paid promotion video this is just my own experience with my own vehicles that i'm sharing with you guys all right now there are fuel additives available for diesel which goes in the diesel tank there is a separate one for petrol vehicles which is used in petrol cars and scooters and bike and these things will go in the fuel tank other than that you also get oil additives which go in the oil sum all right today in this video we are mainly going to talk about the fuel additives which goes in the fuel tank recently i ended up ordering abro 509 on amazon and you get this bottle for roughly around like 300 rupees and this thing uh, let's check out the website and let's see what it says about the benefits now the first point is that it helps remove water from the fuel tank the major drawback of ethanol that is hygroscopic nature maybe this additive will help you fight it the second here is improved fuel efficiency and it also claims to clean the fuel system talking about the dosage uh, roughly 1 ml per liter is standard but the chart is written on the bottle so you can read your bottle and add it accordingly now you can also try this system g and the best thing that i liked about this is it, it comes with this unique pump system right over here so you know you can just press it you can have your own dosage and it is very easy to add abro sadly it's not that easy to add so what i do is i just use a syringe draw the required quantity so 1 ml per liter say if your scooter has a 5 liter fuel tank it just needs 5 ml so this one bottle worth 300 rupees is going to go a long way the affiliate buying links for variety of automotive products for example these additives are available in the description below in the first comment and in the view product section right over here somewhere to support my channel to support my work please use my affiliate section now let me share my experience with additives it makes your engine smooth it may react slightly differently to your own vehicle so make sure to read the user manual there are certain brands like tata they do openly recommend additives i think they have been recommending bardal since a few years so if your user manual recommends additives you can go with that some brands do not recommend additives so make sure you read your user manuals and use the additives at your own risk and if you use these additives uh, please share your vehicle model year and experience in the comments so one thing i said about smoothness it makes the engine quieter and smoother it also improves the starting performance and hopefully it also protects the engine uh, contrary to popular belief additives in my experience at least it does not boost the fuel economy at all because this i think it is a physics issue i mean e20 petrol has less of petrol in it okay it has more ethanol in it and the ethanol has lower calorific value i mean the energy itself as dictated by physics is less in ethanol blended fuel and no amount of additives is going to magically improve the economy like that because the thing that you are buying from the fuel pump dispenser has less amount of power in it okay this is physics you cannot beat it so i think you should not expect anything uh, with respect to fuel economy but uh, as long as it protects the engine and fuel system i think it is fine 
A lot of people ask me that, well, should we switch over to like diesel or CNG or EV? Now, diesel users should not be getting very happy. Okay, uh, I mean, most of them are already troubled with a lot of EGR and DPF issues. If you search BS6 engine issues, then I mean, the YouTube is just full of them. All right. And BS6 diesel is already very high maintenance. And still, uh, I've heard talks about mixing ib that is isobutanol in diesel fuel as well and guys any fuel system which is not designed for blending example if your petrol cars needs e0 that is pure petrol if you add ethanol in it that is known as adulteration all right uh, i don't know maybe next year they are going to mix some kind of fart gas with cng and maybe make a mess out of that as well i can't really see Electric can be a good option if your use is very limited. I mean, highway users with like 500 to 6 km, 600 km run per trip don't have any options. You have to go with ICE, that is internal combustion engine, I mean petrol or diesel. EV have is, has its own problem and it can never be your primary car. So city users, maybe they can go with uh, EV and that could suit them, but highway users, sadly, Currently, there is nothing else available. Now, coming to conclusion and going forward, there was a PIL filed in the Supreme Court, but sadly, it was dismissed. And I hope that uh, soon enough, we get some kind of other legal solution. I think according to me, the system of having different fuel dispensers, as we see in variety of different countries since many years, that I think could be the best solution. So there is one with the different dispensers, there is one with the additives that we are doing right now. If you have any other third options, do let me know in the comment section below. Uh, till that time, well, what you can do, uh, keep buying additives, keep adding them, wait and watch, let's see what happens. Guys, if you are interested in knowing variety of tips and tricks with respect to increasing the life of your vehicles and automotive parts, variety of clickable thumbnails will pop up right here in the form of cards. Click on these videos, jump to that particular content, maybe learn a thing or two new about your vehicle today. That's it guys for this neat little video. Take care and have a nice day.